Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. Just wanted to give you a quick update back from spring break uh, on Monday. Uh, we spent 10 days as a family exploring Scotland for the first time, which was absolutely stunning. Uh, if you've never been there, we went up to, uh, flew into Glasgow and then went up to the Isle of Lewis and Harris and spent uh, a week, rented a house there and explored uh, some amazing landscapes, beautiful people, fantastic food. Uh, it was a really, really cool experience. But also a great time to get away, re, re, you know, pause, reflect, renew, and all those good things for spring break. Um, so I did some reading, as hopefully uh, many of you were, have been able to do as well. Um, on my blog, Market Misbehavior, about once a month, I put out a, uh, a list of books that I've read recently, and it's a way for me to keep honest and keep the discipline of reading regularly, and, and not just reading short-form con short content, but also long-form, uh, timeless content as much as possible. One of the books I read was this one, uh, Quiet by Susan Cain, uh, the sub, uh, subtitle is The Power of Introverts um, in a World That Can't Stop Talking. Um, and it's actually an interesting read uh, for me uh, because I'm actually an introvert and many people are surprised when I explain to them that I'm an introvert because I enjoy public speaking and I do it as often as I can and, and actually enjoy getting in front of a group of people. But it's not about whether you're a confident speaker or whether you like people or whether you like to talk. Um, it's about where you get your energy from. And so for me, as much as I enjoy meeting people and getting out there and uh, presenting, of which I love all of those things, um, for me, it's actually very exhausting. <laughs> and I recharge when I'm able to sit in my room and veg out and read and listen to music and think. So at a big conference, when I attend those, um, I actually escape randomly and go up to the hotel room and put on the headphones, you know, get a book, play a game, something just to, you know, unplug for a little bit, and then I'm able to recharge and, and go back and, and talk with people. So what's interesting about reading about introverts, it's, it's a fascinating book that touches on a lot of different things, but in particular, I think there's some interesting lessons for investors because a lot of the best investors that I've gotten to know over my career, uh, you can tell that they're introverts as well. Um, and I, I would say that one of the characteristics of the introverts that I've known in the investing world is that they are deep thinkers. They are, um, you know, original thinkers. They develop their own theses. They develop their own way of thought, their way of approaching things. And that is what allows them to differentiate themselves from a return perspective, but also from, you know, just establishing their own routine. Um, so I'd encourage all of you, you know, just thinking about whether or not you're introverted. It's a, it's a good lesson in there from the book to, um, you know, to focus on developing your own thesis, right? To, to do your own deep thinking. Now, how can you do that in a world of, you know, financial information overload, right? Financial media, television, websites, blogs, uh, all the, you know, real-time video popping up all the time, giving you ideas. Um, you know, I have a lot of people that, that, you know, that I've heard speak and they say, you know what, I never watch financial television, turn it off, you don't need it. And I would say if it's an all or nothing decision, if your choice is to watch financial media 100% of the time and that's it, or to watch none, then I would say watching none is clearly the right call out of those two because watching it all the time or using it in the wrong way is certainly going to help your or hurt hinder your ability to develop your own individual thesis, your own investment process. Um, but I think used in moderation and used in the right ways, a lot of the inputs that we have available to us can be a great advantage. And the way I would I would suggest to you is with anything like financial television, with blogs, with websites, with uh, email newsletters, all those things that you might get in front of you, don't treat those things as giving you the answers. Treat it as helping you form the questions. So if you just treat it as an idea generation tool, if you're just watching you know, the commentator on TV or you're reading the latest article or you're getting some research and you just treat it as the answer, I think you're shortchanging your own ability to um, you know, immerse yourself in some deep thought and develop your own thesis. So you should use those inputs, all those diverse inputs that you have available to you as a helping you to form the right questions. That should lead you not to the answers, but should lead you to the right questions you want to ask. And then go through the process of developing your own thesis, your own approach, and that will help you validate with real data, evidence-based approach based on the data that you're seeing. So again, um, I think the goal, uh, if, you're, if you're introverted or if you're not, is to make sure that you find time for deep thinking and use all the inputs that you have available to you. Um, use them in a thoughtful, meaningful way. Use it as a way to help you um, frame your questions and identify the right questions that you want to ask yourself and ask of others to help develop your own investment thesis. If this sort of thinking of, of, of uh, process and approach and, uh, and behavioral finances of interest to you, I hope you'll check out my blog, marketmisbehavior.com. 
Thank you so much.